Denise Brophy is a good example. He's become a very successful entrepreneur. Um, we have other young entrepreneurs here. We meet, need more th like them. Who is the next Lax Enterprises? I don't know, but they've got to be out there. So venture capital is, is really um, a, a key component of that as well. And we talked a little bit about talent attraction. Um, I, we put a little booklet out about, about a year ago this month. I was invited by 12 local uh, companies. Um, Perigo, Steelcase, x -Rite, um Michigan State University's um, Med School, and about a dozen others. Meyer, um, uh, Wolverine Worldwide, and they basically said we have a hard time attracting people here. Um, how can you help us? You market this community already, help us. Well, one outgrowth of that help is um, a very cool little booklet, um, 57 Things You Never Knew About West Michigan in Greater Grand Rapids, just kind of fun that they can stick into a mailer from the HR department. I'll show you a very brief video on, um, on, uh, that's now on our website and on YouTube um, for talent attraction, just talking, and it's mostly much younger people than are normally in our videos. Um, and um, uh, it's on our website, www.rightplace.org slash live. And you can download it and pass it on and so on and so forth. And, uh, and then the next step in this talent attraction process is um, we're meeting in a couple of weeks with about that same dozen companies to establish not the right place but a collaborative sort of a concierge service that if somebody comes here, wants to move here to um, take a job at Spectrum or the university or you name it, um, with or without a trailing spouse, there will be somebody who takes that individual around and introduces them to the resources in this community as a, as a person who wants to live here. We do it for a company that wants to move here, which is a different process because they're looking at different things. They, some are the same, some are not. But there's a real need. There are 780 jobs going high, high paying jobs going begging at a dozen companies right now. If we could get 500 of them, that's 500 homes that would get sold. So we are taking, think about the ripple of, you know, that kind of a job at a spectrum, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whether that, and that doesn't include nurses. Those are uh, individuals who are looking for, they're looking for um, in, the, in the IT departments, you, financial, and so on and so forth. So talent really has become a, a key driver. So um, I'll close here because you are part of that talent. You are part of the future of this region. and. Um, I really mean that sincerely. I hope you stay. Um, um, we, we need you to stay. Um, there are opportunities here. Remember, in all, all, in all kind of downtimes, there's always opportunities if you choose to see them. Michigan right now has 85,000 jobs going begging. If you read the newspaper, you don't, you don't know that. But, but they are in healthcare, in financial services, they're in, in local governments, but they're here. Uh, they may no longer be at General Motors, but there are jobs in Michigan to be had. So I hope that you play a role in making this region what you want it to be. So thank you very much, and I'll answer some questions. How do we talk to students? How do we, I mean, we, we're talking to businesses and we're talking to industry. How do we talk to us? How do we keep us in this particular area? How do we, how do we market Michigan as, you know, Oregon or Washington or Massachusetts or Nevada, these places that people are going that are the, the new dynamos for our, for our generation? I think a lot of that conversation has to really take place amongst the young people because I feel sometimes out of my depth with you millennials, you know. Um, I have one of you guys on my staff um, who, who's a graduate from, graduate from here. And there is a group of, of young folks um, who are meeting regularly to exactly discuss what you just talked about. Um, I think just for me or for Tom or, or for Gleaves to say, you know, stay, um, there really needs to be a, a, um, a more of a grassroots, in my opinion, of, 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 the, of the students who are now in school or just graduated. Um, I met one of your young graduates here, uh, and a young African-American man um, who was a photographer for one of the local video studios. He came and took, um, did a video of me for whatever, uh, about a year ago. And we started to talk, and um, I said, "So, what are you? What you know? No, I'm from the Detroit area. I came here to go to GVSU. I got a really good job. I like it here, but I don't. I don't get connected once I left school. So we connected him to MAP, the Multi-Racial um, Association of Professionals, and I, I 
it's hosted by the chamber, I said, grab this young man before he goes to Chicago, okay? Um, because it's, it's, it's about talent, but it's also about diverse talent, and it's about culturally competent talent. Um, if, if you go around the world today, they don't all look like Birgit. Um, uh, and, um, but, but that was a one-time thing. How do we capture that more? I think it would be an interesting project, quite frankly, uh, for you guys to figure out how do we connect to our young colleagues, to tell them that, listen, there, is things, there are things to do here. You have weather in Boston. Um, in fact, I was told by an out-of-towner out the other day um, who came, f who's, who's quite uh, the, the um, entrepreneurship guru and innovation guru, a fellow by the name of Doug Hall, he said, you have almost all the same amenities with the water, your parks, kayaking that Oregon does. Why don't you talk about it? Well, I do. But, you know, and I, we do market all of that, but how do we reach a larger audience, particularly of people your age? I don't have the total answer, um, but I really do believe it has to be a lot more word of mouth or, you know, associating with your own, with your own age group. Because um, it, it can't just be Birgit talking about that, you know? My, my um, while I can and I'm very passionate about this community, uh, you know, it would be like talking to your mother who says, oh, don't leave town. Yeah. So how do you do that? How do you do that? It's a very good question. Um, now, I think GVSU has a fabulous record in keeping your, 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 your graduates, right? I mean, one of the best in the state. And when people tell me, well, everybody leaves, leaves town, but this university keeps a lot of its graduate right here. Yeah. Well, those that are working 88% in Michigan, 79% in West Michigan. Right. So that's so a pretty we, darn... We can still look yeah. towards uh, what, 45,000 of our alums living in uh, the Tri-County region. And, and that's, a, that's a really good uh, track record. The, the other thing that I've said a number of times to, to all of the universities is go through your alumni records and find out where your most successful graduates are and help us retract them back, okay? Um, maybe um, uh, there is a really successful business person who graduated one of the first years from GVSU and now lives and made a lot of money I don't know where, and see if that individual doesn't want to want to move back. You know, boomerangs are acceptable. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and in fact, boomerangs are just fine. So, but are there, are there talented individuals who graduated from our institutions who already have a, a relationship with the state um, who can either come back as mentors to young people like you, who can come back as venture capitalists, who could come back as the CEO of a startup company. Because often what you happen with an entrepreneurial startup, the inventor is brilliant and doesn't know how to run a business. Um, you know, but you, you, you need somebody to do that. How can we start matching those resources um, as well? Uh, that, that's another one. I don't have the answer to it. But I think we have enough graduates out of this state who could potentially be very successful. University of Florida um, is doing a very interesting thing, and I found this out at a conference I attended. Um, rather than just asking their graduates who've become very successful and wealthy to write a check to the development office, they're tying it more into saying, come back and invest in the companies that we're creating through our research, and come back and help us run those companies. And they're actually getting more money for the development office because they're asking for more than just a check, which I thought was pretty creative. Um, so that, that may be another, another opportunity to, to keep talent and bring talent. I, I can tell you uh, Spectrum Health just attracted two pediatric heart surgeons um, for, the, for the DeVos Children's Hospital by figuring out that there was a graduate, um, two people from Michigan living in Houston, and, and, and they saw an opportunity. And, and they already knew the weather and all the stuff that went with it. And so, you know, it's also that identification potentially of, you know, who's from the state, who has been here, who has lived here, and who could come back. So in addition to keeping you. So, sorry, long, long answer to a, to a very insightful question. I'm serious, by the way. You, you um, in politics might be your, we need smart politicians. 